Okay, I will briefly present. This is an old man who has come with a mask, uh, with, a, with a cuff, and suspected lung cancer. The patient has liver disease, which will do, and because of liver disease, there was no possibility of doing. And the patient has respiratory distress also, so we could not do a bronchoscopy. But this is left apical posterior. I don't know how easy it is to approach left apical posterior. <laughs> Anyway, the bronchoscopy could not be done. So we, we are doing an EUS in this case to find out what is the, um, what to do for this case, uh, how to establish. So in this case, now we are finding that there is a mass here and mass is lateral to arch of aorta. And in this case, we are seeing this is the pleura and this is the mass which is lateral to arch of aorta. And this is possibly a central medicinal mass and the pleura can be visceral pleura. To me, this is the parietal pleura and this is the visceral pleura. And this mass is within the epico posterior segment of the left lobe of the lung. So I identified there is a mass because along the epico posterior segment of the lung. This mass is this mass is but not going all the way to the top of the arch of aorta. So epico posterior segment of left lower lobe or upper lobe because the arch is square. So, uh, Doctor, upper lobe. So this is this mass is of upper lobe, not of lower lobe. Upper lobe, this segment. Hmm? So it, it is posterior segment, upper lobe. So we we identified the mass posterior segment, upper lobe, and we have identified. So, so the question is: Is this a solid mass or this is a liquid? So there is. There is no vascularity within the mass, and ideally, we will not be able to do elastography, but we will try. We will try if we can establish some signal for elastography within the mass. So, so we could not find out anything about this mass, more information about the mass. Now, let us see what is this mass doing, and let us see if there is any secondary effect of this mass. There is a spread of this lung mass from where we can get a tissue. So ideally, also, as the theory says, that if you have a tumor node and metastasis, you should be doing FNSE from a metastasis uh, and as this is possible. Okay. So let us see if we have this. This is the mark that we have found out. We will remove these characters okay. and then see if we have. So now I have come, we have come to the familiar structure. This is the left atrium. This is the left ventricle. And this is the interatrial septum. And then this is the left mitral wall. So this structure, as we see, is the left atrium. Left atrium. So now we want to see this structure, which is the left atrium. I am just rotating clockwise, and I see above the left atrium that there is a lymph node. So I will write lymph node structure here. And so I will just show this is. If I rotate, so there is a lymph node, and this is a subcarnal lymph node, which is present close to the left atrium. But now I will rotate more to the other side, just to see if I can find anything. And suddenly, I find something within the left atrium. And this structure is a very surprising structure. I would ask Dr. Diksha, does this patient have a left atrial myxoma or tumor? But no, no, I will ask later. I don't want to ask now. Left atrial myxoma or no myxoma, but this is something within the left atrium. So, what do you think? It must be some tumor. So, there is a node here, there is a mass here, and then we have found that this patient has a segment tumor in the left upper lobe. What do you think this mass is? So, but can lung cancer invade the cardiac chambers? What is the possibility of invasion of cardiac chambers? What I remember, the cardiac invasion is very, very rare. So is it a very rare cardiac invasion of lung cancer that we are seeing? But keep on thinking. We will keep on thinking because I rotated this a little bit left and suddenly I find that this two mass is seems to be dividing into two. So this mass is not a mass which is within the left atrium. Both of the left atrium is clear. This mass is within the left in the left pulmonary veins, within the branches of the pulmonary. So then I would say 
that this is a tumor emboli, tumor emboli from which we are having, uh, from which of the thrombus. Okay, ah, I cannot do FNAC from the mass, but I can do an FNAC from this tumor emboli. So that is the second option I have. So, Dr. Tinko, what, why, why don't we take it? Excuse me, FNAC of this tumor emboli. Excuse detail. Tinko. Where is Tinko? No, no, wait, wait. But there are nodes also, no? First, let us characterize these nodes. Oh, so these nodes that we are seeing here are more or less pathological nodes. So it is one would be, we will take the FNAC later in this case in the separate chamber because we have got our uh, one more case to go. So we will take the FNAC. Uh, uh, our job was to demonstrate that this is the case of tumor involving the lung with extension of this and if by chance extension into this and you can take an FNAC. Now, just for a sec, because I have not demonstrated the um, lymph nodal characteristics others have, I would like to now demonstrate the lymph nodal characteristics by just briefly recording the video and then taking the is out. So this is a brief video I am recording and I will show you the lymph nodal characteristics of this patient. Okay. So what I will do is you please change the scope, change the patient. In the meantime that you change, I will analyze and show you what the lymph nodal characteristics. Um, get ready with the next case five minutes. Okay. How do you analyze the lymph node? The lymph node is analyzed by five, six, seven, eight, nine characters. One of my friend, Dr. Pius Somani, has given a good lecture, what to see in lymph node. And you have also had others lecture. I have not heard those lectures. I have not had time. But Ibis, start the next, prepare for the next Ibis case. So, what is the site? What is the site of the lymph node? Okay, subcaranal area lymph nodes up to 3 centimeters are normal. Right paratracheal lymph nodes up to 3 centimeters are normal. Let me measure what is the size of this lymph node. This lymph node is about 34 mm. So when it comes to site, fine. But uh, site Subcarnal area to site and size, both correlate. Right paratracheal, so there is an article of cadaveric dissection of GRD in which he has mentioned what is the normal lymph node. Why is this important? You find that two millimeter lymph, uh, two five millimeter lymph node in the pulmonary ligament. But that is no, no, no. Don't, don't, don't. You put in the put in the scope. You find a five millimeter scope. That is no problem. Okay. Okay, you turn to me. Okay, you change the scope. Give it to me. What needle is this? Okay. So size. The second thing is size. Shape. Now this particular lymph node is sort of rounded, hypoechoic lymph node. This is more likely to be malignant. See, the lymph nodes when they enlarge, they tend to lose their medulla. And the hyperechoic hyper medulla is no longer hyperechoic. Oh, sir, every day with this only. If there is invasion of the tumor. So in this particular lymph node that we have seen just now, size, size, shape, then character, then vascularity, then elastography, and finally, contrast injection. So we have shown, just mentioned briefly, some of the characters of the lymph node. And now we are starting the next case. And uh, because we have got about 20, 25 minutes before the next case, uh, we are done with the previous case. Thank you. The mic, you are on. Needle ready, Anna. Needle. 
अंदर लेना है जीप अंदर लीजिए जीप को अंदर लीजिए अंदर लेना हाँ रेडी सर ओके सक्षम लोकल सो वी नाउ इंटीबेटेड द पेशेंट वीव गॉन इन साइड जस्ट गिविंग सम लोकल जस्ट टू कीप द पेशेंट कंफर्टेबल एंड एनेस्थेटाइज सो दीक्षा कैन यू जस्ट गिव अस द ब्रीफ हिस्ट्री फॉर दिस पेशेंट वाइल so we can approach the subcarinal lymph node either from the right or from the left i'm going inside the right main bronchus uh, i'm just uh, you know uh, ap uh, approximating the uh, scope to the medial aspect of the carina and of course you can see uh, the subcarinal area with uh, uh, you know the subcarinal lymph node uh, showing a grainy appearance out there so that's really the enlarged lymph node so it's pretty large as you can see i'm just moving at it a little bit so there are various characteristics of lymph nodes that are usually described whenever you are talking about uh, lymph nodes so one is the size of course it's enlarged uh, i think sir can also measure the size as we speak so first you need to freeze the image or sometimes you can even do it live the so size the second one is shape either it's round or oval the third one is the homogeneity you can see that the lymph node is heterogeneous it's not homogeneous uh there's something called a central hyla structures and coagulation necrosis sign which is also described so it's a non homogeneous one lymph node you can pretty much see that it is a conglomerate of lymph nodes it is not just one single lymph node the last one is about the vascularity you can see quite a lot of vessels inside the lymph node that's called as a centra in, central intranodal vessel sign uh, a lot of these characteristics are used to define or say that a lesion i mean the suspicion could be malignant or it could be benign but however the sensitivity and the specificity are lacking for these things and so it's a little difficult to go ahead and really say that this is really what it is so just wanted you to appreciate the uh, characteristics of lymph nodes on ultrasound so this is the grainy appearance of the subcarinal lymph node that you can see so which is a, a very nice 
vessel. Yeah, vessel you can actually see the vessel. Yes, sir. You can see the vessel even on beam mode imaging. There are multiple vessels actually, sir. The multiple yeah. vessels. You want to avoid the vessels? Yeah, we would like to avoid the vessels whenever we sample because we don't want a bloody aspirate. Mm -hmm. So we try to usually see an area where, uh, you know, uh, we are able to get a sampling without, uh, you know, crossing or puncturing a vessel. Okay, so this was a quick demonstration of the station 7 lymph node. I just showed you. Let me go into the left main bronchus to show you the same. Uh, it's not going to be very different. Just the fact that, uh, you know, the two approaches to it. So you can see nice big lymph node out here again. And you can definitely see the intranodal vessel which sir is pointing out to with the arrows. Yeah. However, it is not just one lymph node that you must see. You should go ahead and see all lymph nodes that are possible. So let's do a survey. Right now, I show, demonstrated the station seven. Now let's go on to the right side. Okay, I've entered the right main bronchus. So there is something called as the 11 hour superior and the 11 hour inferior node. So this is the takeaway of the right upper lobe bronchus. So here is where you will actually find the 11 hour superior lymph node. Okay, so that's really what we're looking for. So this usually, yeah, you can actually see that there is a lymph node, which is small. Do you think it's malignant, sir? I would say benign. I would say benign. benign. Yeah. Because even, I would like to just give small input. Sarcoidosis yes, is an infiltrative disease. Yes, sir. Tuberculosis is a destructive disease. Mm -hmm. Sarcoid lymph nodes can enlarge. Mm -hmm. Tuberculosis lymph nodes, before enlarging, they will liquefy. So as sir was speaking, I've now gone further down onto the right side. Uh, what you see above is the takeoff of the middle lobe. And I mean, I'm, and my scope currently is in the lower lobe. So any lymph node that you will find at this junction after approximating it to the wall is the level R inferior lymph node. Okay, so which you can't see here. So I've shown you 11 R inferior, the 11 R superior, which is what you will see here. Above the takeoff, take of the uh, right upper lobe bronchus is where you, you can start scanning and you'll be able to see the 10R lymph node and the 10R and the 4R are separated by the azygous vein. So Dr. Malay was showing you so much about the azygous vein in the previous cases. So you just have to do a quick scan and slowly keep coming upwards. And as you come, you will be able to see a lymph node out there. So that's really the lymph node 10R that you can see. Yes, that's, that's the 10R lymph node. You come further up, slowly, and as you come up, as you come up, you should be able to see the 4R. So, this is the 4R. This is where it becomes a little bit murky. Yes, sir. Because now, can we take assistance of what is your endoscopic distance? Yes, sir. Are you in trachea or you are just... What is just about to slip out of? Uh, we are just in the trachea, uh, uh, lower end of the trachea. So this if is you are in lower end, I would call it the four hour. Four hour. Okay. So I will call this lymph node as four hour. Four hour lymph node. Yes. So this is also pretty enlarged. Again, as you can see. And I definitely need to see some relationship if you are finding a four hour with vessels. Yes, sir. Whether they are superior vena cava, the rotation will show some vessel. Okay. There are just multiple lymph nodes out so here. There are multiple, multiple lymph, lymph, lymph nodes. There's another one out here. So you want to do FNAC of 4R, I think, or subkernel? I would say 4R. Why? Because these lymph nodes are more rounded. Yeah. So, so between the we... rounded and triangular, I would prefer a rounded node. Okay, sir. And, and the other thing is, now that we've shown you 4R, we'll just show you 4L as well. So position again, we are at the lower end of the, uh, you know, trachea, just approximated on the lateral lateral wall out there. And then you'll see the famous Mickey Mouse sign that was getting described. So you'll be able to see the pulmonary artery, the iota, and the small lymph node. So this lymph node that you will see here on the top at 12 o'clock position is the 4L mm -hmm. lymph node. Okay, with the pulmonary artery and the iota on either side, giving the appearance of the ears of the Mickey Mouse called the Mickey Mouse sign. And what you will see beyond these two vessels is the station five uh, lymph node. 
there is a there's a station five also ah, so that is the four l lymph node hmm? yeah so i will show it yeah so that is the four l lymph node that is the pulmonary artery on the left and the one on the right side at about three o'clock position is the aorta so the pulmonary artery and the arch of the iota actually look like the ears of mickey mouse and the 4l will constitute the nose so that's really what is the mickey mouse sign so you, yeah so you agree this is ligamentum arteriosum yes sir, yes, sir. Mm. so just to complete the survey we finish 4l let's get inside a little more okay and this is the takeoff of the uh, Left upper lobe, the lower lobe, and at the carinal spur here, whatever you will see will be. Can you show me eleven? Going to the left lobe yes. and show me the descending aorta. Because there's a, if you go to the left lung press and move much more to the left, you will be able to see descending aorta. You are seeing anterior structure. All you have to do is rotate more anticlockwise, yes. and you will be able to see the descending. This is the descending, descending. aorta. Okay. So, with the trick, and what you can descending aorta all the way, you will come back into the bronchus to the arch of aorta. That is another way of tracing. Because from here you will be able to trace the if there is a lymph node along the paraesophageal. So the, the trick is trace one vessel from beginning to end. Okay. So you lost the descending aorta. You will go in again into the left bronchus. Turn it whichever way. I am in. I am inside the left. The clockwise, you will find the pulmonary subcarinal area. Yeah, so this is the so anti-clockwise. You will find the, the other way. You will find the aorta. Yeah. More, 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 more anti-clockwise. Yes. Are you in the left bronchus? Yes, sir. Inside okay. the left. So, so this is uh, where means uh, I would say probably move your body also. If you can move your body. And this much rotation is required, and then you can go into the. So I, if with endoscopy, it is easy. But as I said, this is just one of my ways to see. So we, we will do the FNC later. Yes, sir. You but will demonstrate the anatomy. But can, can I also try yes, and demonstrate yes, sir, the anatomy please. some a little bit? Yes, sir. Okay. Because people are no longer interested that much in that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, in FNC now. Okay. So I will start again because I am nicely emphasized. I don't know how to enter the bronchus, but I will just manage with. I am in the trachea still. Okay. Yes, sir. But I am deep down. You are deep yeah, now down. in the lower end of the trachea. So now, now in the lower end. Okay. Lower end. Lower end. Okay. So first, first I will do into the right bronchus. Is it the right bronchus? Uh, okay. The lower lobe, sir. Okay. Yeah, so that is the right bronchus. So this is the right, right bronchus. Okay. This yes. is the right bronchus. Yes, sir. So once I am in the right bronchus, I want to see right now this is anterior to right bronchus, what is lateral to right bronchus, and what is what is anterior and a little bit medial to right bronchus is the heart. So I will concentrate on first the demonstration of cardiac structure. For this, I will have to change the depth. And I have to change new depth, and this is the depth I have changed. So I have changed the depth of the structure, and in this case, I am finding now that this is the as I will go as low as possible in the right right bronchus, and I will identify whatever structures are I can see. So in this case, I believe this is the left pulmonary artery, but I will confirm it number one. And this is the superior vena cava, and this is the aorta, and this is the left atrium. So how will we do now? Can we inject some air bubble? Because I want to see them coming through the superior vena cava, and then appearing in the right pulmonary artery, and then this aorta till I level these structures. Vena cava. This is pulmonary artery. This is left atrium upper part. 
and this is the aorta. And this is, mind you, this is the ascending aorta. This is not the descend, ascending, yes. You, have you injected the bubbles? Yeah, injecting, sir. Injected? So we will keep our eyes here. First, the bubbles will come into the superior vena cava, and then they will go. Injected, sir. Okay, you can see, and you can see they appeared first in the superior vena cava, yes, yes. and then they appeared in the pulmonary artery. artery. And they have not appeared in the left atrium, they have not appeared in the aorta. So this is the demonstration. Now, a little bit about pulmonary artery. I am keeping it here in the end. I am dividing it in rotating the pulmonary artery. You can see the bubbles nicely coming, rotating it nicely coming. You can see the whole of the chamber and then the pulmonary artery I am dividing, rotating. It will divide into two branches. And so this is the left atrium. I will clear these characters. So this is the pulmonary artery, superior vena cava, aorta, and this is the left atrium. So left atrium, I am not able to see so much, but now I am able to see the left atrium well. And this is the left atrium. And when I rotate the left atrium, to the right, this is the left superior pulmonary vein, and this would be the left inferior pulmonary vein, which I cannot see well. But I am seeing the appearance of bubble very much within the pulmonary artery and the superior vena cava. Okay. Now I will decrease the breath once more and show you that this bubbles have come into the pulmonary artery from the from the right pulmonary trunk, and remember. That you can see whole of the pulmonary trunk from the right bronchus in this way because this all is pulmonary trunk here. And from here, if we cannot see from the right bronchus the left pulmonary artery, but the whole pulmonary trunk total can be visualized from the uh, right bronchus. Okay, now I will go into the left bronchus. Uh, which one is the left? This, this is the right, sir. This is the right, so now I will go. This is the left, now. Yes, sir. Okay. Now I will go into the left. And as already been shown, demonstrated that when you go into the left bronchus, if you approach to the wall anterior and then you so, you will see the same structure and you will again see that from this right bronchus, you can now demonstrate left bronchus, you can see the right. I am in the left only, no? Yes, sir. Okay, left only. You can see the same structure. Whatever has bubbles is the right atrium. And whatever the bubbles is the right atrium and the pulmonary artery. You rotate clockwise, you can see the pulmonary artery right. You can, but you cannot. I cannot easily see the left pulmonary artery. Probably I can. And if I say this is the yes, this is the left pulmonary, because this is the left pulmonary artery. So there is a confusion among mind. But which one is the left pulmonary artery? And in this case, whatever nodes you are seeing, if they are nodes, and if they are seeing beyond this, the left pulmonary artery node. I don't know which station it will be 10 or 11, which are, because this this station is what you are saying. That in the, the left bronchus, you are rotating to left, you will see the left pulmonary artery. Now here is where I will move my body scope more to left. And this is what I was saying, that I will find the dis descending aorta. The descending aorta, I want to calculate that I am doing the descending aorta, because descending aorta has a diameter, say around two, two centimeters. And this is the descending or time tracing from the left bronchus. I moved all the way to the left. Now what I'm doing is I'm pulling it back. And should I remove? I'm pulling the left. So we will remove this stroke and we will proceed with FNAC in this case. And uh, you can ask your questions because we have demonstrated the, from the right bronchus and the left bronchus what are the necessary cardiac structure. So can you put in a US scope? Or, no, or we will put in a US scope because there was slight uh, desaturation. So we remove the scope and we'll proceed. Proceed once the oxygen saturation is okay with the isopheric scope and the US guided FNSC.